One of the biggest talking points around the release of Cyberpunk 2077 was all of the missing or cut features. I'm sure you remember the numerous viral posts, videos, and even articles talking about things promised by CDPR, or even in some instances shown off in earlier gameplay demos that were completely absent once we actually got the release version of the game. And with some of the features with Cyberpunk, they were literally on the disc version of the game, but it was removed as soon as you installed the day one update. Well, I too made a video on this topic, and recently I was thinking about that video and realized, at this point, modders have added back almost all of the removed or missing features from this game, including some of the biggest cut features. Wait, what's that noise? Oh, that's today's video sponsor, Enlisted. And let me tell you, Enlisted is not like those other World War II multiplayer shooters, because in Enlisted, you don't just control a single soldier, but an entire squad of soldiers. Did that recent bombing run take out 90% of your squad right after you spawned in? Well, don't worry, because in Enlisted, you're able to switch to that last surviving soldier and fight onward. In Enlisted, at any any given point, you're able to give orders to your squad or even on the fly switch between members of the squad. Each individual member can even have their own specialty. Every squad and enlisted will play a different role to keep the battles dynamic and you constantly in the action. You're going to have things like historically accurate tanks, planes, engineers, and even specialized units like flamethrower troops. There are a ton of weapons to choose from, ranging from simple bolt actions every soldier had to some seriously specialized equipment. And the battles in enlisted are on an absolutely immense scale. Absolutely love how much customization there are for squads and enlisted. There are a ton of upgrades to choose from, and you can really get things down to each individual soldier having their own role. And it gets even better because you can play enlisted basically anywhere. It is completely free to download right now with no purchase necessary, and you can get it on the Xbox Series S or X, the PS5, but also on PC as well as the PS4 and Xbox One. And there's even cross-platform support. And you're in luck. Since you watched this video, you can click on my link in the description and get an exclusive bonus in-game with three days of premium time and orders for your troops and weapons. And if you do this quickly enough, you'll probably find me in-game trying to figure out how to fly this plane. But looking back at Cyberpunk 2077, did you know that Cyberpunk had a console? So yeah, for the release version of Cyberpunk, the game had a built-in console. You could turn this on simply by editing a text file, but this was one of the features in the game that only lasted 9 days as one of the first updates added to the game actually removed the console outright. With CDPR saying, remove debug console to prevent functions that could lead to crashes or blocked quests. This doesn't mean we don't want to support the modding community, stay tuned for more info on that. Definitely a bit of an odd choice, but thankfully Cyberpunk 2077's most popular mod of all time reintroduced the console, that with Cyber Engine tweaks. And it is one of those interesting situations where all those console commands that you are inputting into the Cyber Engine Tweaks console are just things that work with the game. Those are commands created by CDPR, but you do need to download a mod to actually be able to use the console commands. Okay, so in fairness, that remove feature is actually pretty boring, but did you also know that Cyberpunk 2077 had a hardcore mode? This is one of those cut features that never really gets talked about or highlighted in some of the cut feature posts. But an interview given a full year and a half before the full release of the game, one of the CDPR devs was asked about difficulty modes and Cyberpunk, and he described the most fun difficulty mode I think will be the hardcore setting, where we will turn off the UI, you live as well. And that will be a real challenge for a lot of players. This dev actually left CDPR two months after this interview was given, and although you yourself may have completely forgotten this was a thing, there actually were a decent amount of players that come the release of Cyberpunk were making posts online wondering where the hardcore mode was. Especially when you consider one of the major criticisms of this game is by mid-game, even on the hardest difficulty, you can kind of just steamroll most enemies. Well, fortunately, with just a couple of mods, we can make our own immersive hardcore experience. One of the core things described was HUD limitations, and although you can manually turn off your HUD to some degree in Cyberpunk, limited HUD is going to give you far more control over this. This mod, of course, lets you hide aspects of your HUD, but more importantly, it allows you to set controls over when certain aspects of your HUD reappear. I configured things so when running around, and even in combat, I had very little information on screen. No minimap, no health bar, but as soon as I used the scanner, or even zoom in, I could see most of that info for a couple of seconds. But obviously this won't really work in combat unless I put my weapons away, making combat encounters much more tense because you just are limited in what information you have. And other things like my minimap popping back up when I get into a car did feel pretty natural here, and thankfully the limited HUD mod is fully configurable, so you could really tune your hardcore version of Cyberpunk to function however you want it to. And a great tandem mod for this is the scissors difficulty options. This will give you a variety of configurable options to make Cyberpunk a bit harder. There is one option to disable enemies appearing on the minimap, which feels perfect.
like for a hardcore experience, as this will require you to tag enemies or even use a quick hack like ping to track their locations. But some of the other settings from this mod also fit in pretty well. You can make it so enemies have no shooting delay when you get into combat, they're going to immediately spring to attack you, but also immersive damage effects and movement so you don't bop around quite as quickly and direct hits from enemies will make you flinch. Level scaling and balance also makes a ton of sense here. It'll make it so the enemies in the world continue to scale up to your level across the entire game. By default in Cyberpunk 2077, enemies in certain districts will stop scaling to your level at a certain point. So by mid-game, some of the early districts are just incredibly easy to clear through because those enemies are way under your level. But with this mod installed, almost every enemy encounter will remain a threat, and you could even increase the damage dealt and received to make Cyberpunk have a much faster paced combat. Although if you recall, one of the other interesting lines that Dev had was you live as well. It was kind of odd in the context of the larger sentence, but perhaps when they said to live, they actually meant survival mechanics. There is a survival mod for Cyberpunk 2077 known as Live in Night City. Sadly, this was discontinued after the dev found Elden Ring, but fortunately, fans did continue updating this mod, and now there's a newer version on GitHub. This will add in requirements for you to manage your hunger, thirst, and fatigue for your character, finally giving all of those random food shops all over Night City a real purpose, and a genuine need for you to return to your apartment and go to sleep every once in a while. Pretty similar to how this stuff works in other games' hardcore modes, these aspects of your character will decline over time, and if they drop too far, you're going to get debuffs and even become weaker. So if you don't eat, drink, and sleep, you're going to start noticing things like less stamina overall, less HP in total, your move speed overall will be a bit slower, and you could even get some glitch effects if you let things get particularly dire. But overall, with just a few mods for Cyberpunk 2077, you can create a truly enjoyable hardcore mode that is probably pretty similar to what CDPR was working on or had planned internally. One of the pretty common observations you would have if you read through some of the old posts of cut features for Cyberpunk, but then actually started to look into the sources of those posts, is for several things, there were just misplaced expectations by fans. CDPR didn't actually promise what people thought they did, and they were just kind of letting their hype get carried away. And one of the biggest examples of this, that there isn't necessarily a quote we could point at to say, oh, CDPR cut this feature back, but at the same time, as many people finally did get the game, they expected a lot more, is with gang interactivity. Outside of questing, gangs don't feel nearly as large and alive as a part of Night City as they probably should have. And one great mod to fix that is Gangs of Night City. This mod will incorporate far more gang interactions into the world, like the ability to actually join gangs. It's pretty basic right now, you join and gain some apparel, as well as it hooks into the gang reputation system. That aspect of this mod is interesting, but what I much prefer is how much more alive it made Night City feel. Now as you're just driving around, you'll find gangs in full-on open combat. Sometimes you'll stumble upon conflicts at points of interest, at other times it'll be at the edges of different districts. After joining a gang, there's even a mechanic where you can get ambushed by another gang if you go into rival gang territory. And overall, as you're just playing and experiencing Night City, the gang presence is going to be far more felt. Sometimes this will directly involve you, but a lot of the times it's just what's happening around you. You'll run into things. And I think this mod does a pretty good job at making Night City as a whole feel more alive and genuinely dangerous. The single worst change CDPR made to Cyberpunk 2077 is gimping the fast travel map. This happened around patch 1.5, where they made it so instead of showing all of the markers on the fast travel map, now instead it would only show fast travel points. Like half the time I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077, I am just filming B-roll for a video, which means I am fast traveling around to different objectives to try and do something that looks interesting on camera. This change made that notably more tedious, you'd have to first track a location on the regular map, then you can switch to the fast travel map and actually see that location and fast travel near it. Well, rant aside, modders have fixed this also. Better fast travel map will combine the functionality of the fast travel map and the typical map, adding in a bunch of filters so you could toggle each of the various locations in the world on the fast travel map while also being able to fast travel. It's pretty handy, you could easily turn on or off all of the various map categories, as well as easily locate activities that are next to fast travel points. I think this is a far more intuitive map, and frankly, I would love to see CDPR add this as an official thing at some point. One of the other common categories of cut content in Cyberpunk 2077 is around cyberware. One notable feature that was removed was wall hanging from mantis blades. This was prominently shown in the 2018 gameplay demo as a cool, unique tool for stealth or even just gaining a cool vantage point. And thankfully, this is one of the first major features to be re-implemented into Cyberpunk thanks to modding, as we do have the mod wall hang that will allow you with the press of a hotkey to basically stick yourself to a wall. You will functionally be digging yourself into the wall, but also giving you the ability to slowly move around on the wall or even climb up higher or jump. Unfortunately, there is no requirement from this mod to have mantis blades 
needs equipped to unlock this ability. I feel like that actually would be a pretty big upgrade, but of course you could always set limitations on yourself, make it so you only use this as you do have Mantis Blades equipped. And honestly, it's quite handy to have this. Although at first glance, it almost looks like a gimmick. You quickly realize that Cyberpunk 2077 and Night City overall has a ton of verticality. This becomes pretty powerful, whether it be trying to get a weird angle to snipe from, or even just quick hacking enemies stealthily from a distance. Being able to strategically place yourself up on some wall or other structure is actually pretty handy more often than you would think. But speaking of E3, a pretty nice chunk of Cyberpunk 2077 modding is around trying to recreate the two E3 builds of the game. In particular, a lot of what we saw in that full E3 2018 gameplay that was released. From interviews after the game launched, it was alleged a lot of the 2018 demo was largely just faked or really the game being propped up for the demo as opposed to it actually being integrated features. An article claiming this was posted by Jason Trier and got big enough that the head of CDPR responded to it, basically saying that of course some aspects of the demo were work in progress, as that demo was shared two years before release, but that the demo overall wasn't faked. Regardless of what you believe, obviously a lot of the stuff we saw in that demo was changed or outright gone by the eventual release of the game, but modders are adding a lot of it back, like the HUD. The E3 2018 inventory is a big one. This will be a completely new look and layout of the inventory, and this mod does a phenomenal job of recreating what we saw in that 2018 gameplay. It is almost exactly the same. And overall, I think this inventory honestly looks great. It definitely is a significant mix-up over what we have in-game right now, making things definitely feel fresh and novel. And if you want to take things even a step further, you can also add in the E3 Icon Remastered mod, which will add in some of the map markers that we saw in the E3 demo. But since I assume you want to spend some time outside of the inventory, there also is the E3 2018 Lighting mod. And yeah, you guessed it, this is going to overhaul the lighting and visuals of Cyberpunk. It'll attempt to bring them a bit more in line with what we saw in the E3 2018 demo, and it does a really good job at it. I think overall this mod just looks great. It is one of the best and definitely one of the most popular visual mods currently available for Cyberpunk. I know those stuff like this is always going to be super subjective. I think the lighting changes this brings make some aspects of Night City almost appear a bit softer. There's definitely more of a blue tint on the game overall, but especially with ray tracing, it makes some aspects just pop far more as well. And although the core goal of this mod is to try and make it look like the 2018 gameplay, I would say in general it also is a visual upgrade over vanilla Cyberpunk 2077, and you can take that even a bit further with the E3 2018 HUD mod. This will extend the visual overhaul beyond just your inventory and onto the HUD as well. We'll now have some of those iconic boxy red HUD elements that we overanalyzed back in 2018, but I think a lot of people love this mod, including myself, because this is how we first saw Cyberpunk. That 2018 gameplay is what really made a lot of people fall in love love with the idea of this game. The HUD overall is fairly similar, the layout is somewhat rearranged, and the big difference is red is the new primary color, with light blue as a secondary color in your HUD, and you could augment this even a bit further with the E3 NPC nameplates. Every NPC in Night City will once again have nameplates above their head, and in combat I found this to be genuinely helpful. I would oftentimes forget how many different variants of enemies there actually are in Cyberpunk, but now that I could see their names, it made this far clearer. But overall, it does give you a pretty good reminder of the amount of diversity there are among different enemies and each of their roles. But if you want to experience E3 beyond just the visual, we also do have the E3 Smart Windows mod. This will re-implement that random smart window we saw from E3, but this time with some more practical applications. You can simply see the weather and control your blinds with a few different modes, but this also will have an integration with the Stock Market mod, so you can see the latest business news and stock prices, and these are real. You can buy and sell these stocks, and they will dynamically change based off your actions in Night City. Overall, the two week 3 demos for Cyberpunk 2077 definitely showed a bit of a different game, and of course, to some degree, this is going to be inevitable. You're creating and presenting a demo a full two and a half years before the game actually comes out, but at the same time, it definitely seems like there is a bit more going on with the case of Cyberpunk, but thankfully now, two and a half years after the release of the game, we're starting to see some of those desired E3 features make a return, like breach takedowns. Some of the earlier builds of Cyberpunk offered physical means for hacking, not just digital. This was partly done via monowire, where you could hack somebody from a medium distance, or even in some other gameplay, we saw people just physically grabbing enemies and jacking into them. In the 2018 demo, it was described in the world of Cyberpunk, once you are jacked into a network, you have access to everything it connects to. And I think the mod Breach Takedown re-implements this in a really cool way. Breach Takedown makes it so when you grapple with an enemy, you can immediately jack into them and bypass the network. 
almost exactly how we saw it in that 2018 gameplay. And when you do this, it'll automatically go through the breach protocol process and upload all of the things you typically can there. And like, I don't know about you, but for me at this point in my Cyberpunk 2077 career, I literally never use breach protocol anymore. The vast majority of these demons I typically ignore, but being able to jack in and do it as opposed to doing this puzzle makes me far more likely to use it and even spec into this build path that I typically ignore. I like this one because it actually gives you a reason to go hand to hand with enemies and opens up a new and unique playstyle in Cyberpunk of almost a fun melee Netrunner stealth hybrid. One of the cut Cyberpunk features that is often forgotten about is the Flathead. This is that robot you get during the prologue of the game and it is very much so still in the game. But in the 2019 demo, CDPR actually shared quite a few additional details about this, but these were never posted publicly. Compared to the E3 2018 demo, the 2019 demo was actually handled very differently. The 2019 demo originally was about an hour long and shown to press at E3, this behind closed doors so you could write reports on it. I was fortunate enough to actually see this at E3 2019. What we saw was about an hour of uncut footage, somebody just playing the game, but what was published later that summer was only about 14 minutes of footage. That original hour of footage was heavily edited down with many parts cut out of it. CDPR described this was so they still had some exclusive footage they could use for some of the other events they were doing in 2019, but part of the footage that was never shared publicly included more details on the flathead. As in the original build of the game, the entire engineer attribute tree was meant to be based around this little guy, and the flathead was going to act almost as a robot companion throughout the entire game. It was mentioned that better perks allowed you to give the flathead better commands, and there would even be entire sections of missions that you can complete using this robot on its own. You definitely get a glimpse of this during the prologue of Cyberpunk as it exists right now, but after the intro to the game, the flathead is gone and there is no proper companion options in Cyberpunk. So although nobody is technically added in the flathead as a full-fledged companion, modders have added in a companion system around all kinds of other drones with drone companions. And this mod is fairly similar to what CDPR originally intended. It will require commitment as to get drone companions, you must use a different cyber deck that's going to heavily limit your quick hacking abilities. But it still somewhat does rely on engineering. You're able to craft various tiers of drone companions that you can not only control, but also enhance in combat. And overall, it's a pretty cool mod as it does give you a genuinely unique way to experience and play through Cyberpunk. You'll go around collecting different drone recipes, you could upgrade the drones yourself, and almost have a small drone army as you get into combat. And you know, sometimes it's just nice to have somebody with you. Adventuring around in Cyberpunk can get pretty lonely in vanilla. One of the features cut from Cyberpunk that is very apparent is vehicle customization. As you walk around Night City, you can see a ton of different variants of the same car. And when you look at some of those different variants, you can really see what this vehicle customization system would have looked like. And in the lead up to the game, we even heard about how certain types of vehicles would be more customizable than others, as CDPR divided the vehicles in Night City into different categories. So though full-on visual vehicle customization has never been added, one of my personal favorite mods for this game is the Car Modification Shop, which does add vehicle customization back into Cyberpunk 2077 in a major way. Simply drive any vehicle from your garage into this newly placed shop and you'll have a whole array of performance upgrades you can apply. With this mod, you can make some of the most forgettable cars into the game, some of the fastest, and even handle incredibly well. And what this serves to do is give you a ton of additional options in choosing which car to drive, because getting around quickly is pretty important at times in Night City, and car customization allows you to make even some of the silliest vehicles in the game relatively quick and definitely relevant. But even just from a broader balancing perspective, it is pretty nice in that it does provide itself as a nice eddy sink as you start to accumulate too many. Something else you probably knew about was Cyberpunk 2077 was intended to have a fully functional metro system as an alternate to fast travel. Early on, analyzing and speculating over this metro map from one of the trailers was a huge talking point in the community. And this made it a decent way through development, as even in the release build of the game, you could find quite a few of the partially complete metro stations that you can access. Fortunately, today this was added back by modders, so honestly, this is probably one of the most popular of the cut content mods out there right now, and it kind of just does what you'd expect. It'll take you from one metro station to another with some incredible views of the city all in between. And you could even download the E3 metro mod, which will make it so the metro car look like they did in E3 2018. And although it isn't necessarily a feature that was cut, it always did kind of feel weird to me that you can't call a cab in Night City, especially after you complete that Delamain quest. 
and you do see Delamain driving you around in one of the most prominent trailers for the game. But thankfully this too has been re-implemented by modders thanks to the Transports of Night City mod, where you could finally call your own cab to very inefficiently go from point A to point B. And thanks again to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. Enlisted truly embraces that large-scale battlefield feeling. I'm actually absolutely obliterated in planes, tanks, and even just when trying to get some gameplay with the cool experimental weapons, but I did have a ton of fun along the way, and you will too, so click on my link in the description and get an exclusive bonus in-game with three days of premium time and orders for your troops and weapons. Right now, we find Cyberpunk 2077 in a pretty interesting and curious spot. We don't have dates for anything. We know patch 1.7 is coming, and it may end up being one of the biggest updates this game ever gets, as it seems like with patch 1.7, CDPR is really moving past some of the bug fixing and actually getting into adding big new features. Vehicle combat and the police overhaul in particular are not necessarily cut features, but things people definitely want upgraded, and it seems like that is coming. But we also are getting Phantom Liberty at some point this year. Will Patch 1.7 and Phantom Liberty release at the same time, or differently? And even with that in mind, when is this all coming? Will it be another summer release, or are we going to be stuck waiting all the way till December again? In some ways, I think the fact that we don't know the date is a good thing. It definitely seems like CDPR is taking their time with Phantom Liberty. They want to get this one right, not make the same mistakes they made with the release of the game. And frankly, I'm okay with waiting, but we may be finding out more soon. CDPR is having an earnings call in about a month from right now. So if you do want to check out that, you can get subscribed as I will have full coverage on it. Otherwise, maybe check out some of the best mods to come out for Cyberpunk 2077 in all of 2022. 